coming down from a wedding high and I'm crashing and all I can do is look at photos and reminisce and look at photos and look at videos and look at photos. I can't even live right now. So that's why let's talk about it. I know, I, I feel like we have to talk about all the details or I'm gonna explode. Okay, where should we start? The beginning with the uh, very beginning? Okay, we're gonna start from the very beginning because this is gonna be a two-part series. This video is all gonna be about how we planned the wedding and the next one will be about the wedding recap. Woo! So let's get it out. Let's get it out. Let's backtrack to last summer. Okay. I called Cassie and I remember this so vividly because I was in the driveway of my parents' house mm -hmm. and I was like, hey, you know, what do you think about a ring? And Cassie says, I don't like rings. And I was like, really? And so I had her start Pinteresting some rings just to be like, you know, just like, tell me where you live, just plant some seeds. And she sends me over links to Forever 21 <laughs> rings. And they're not like your traditional like single solitaire with some diamonds. They're like full on like rose braids and it's pink stones and florals. That's what I like. Went back to Sam and I was like, okay, this is what we have. This is what I think she wants. Let's try to do it. So we found a jeweler in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and we went there and he crafted a unique special one of a kind ring. The ring was done in about a month. Uh -huh. And then we all took a family trip, family as in me, my boyfriend, Sam and Cassie, to Maui! Kauai! Oh my god, my star. Kauai! <laughs> so, do you have any idea? Uh, no, I, th I had zero idea that any of this is going on behind the scenes because I'm super oblivious. Like, when I'm focused on my work, I'm focused on my work. Like, Sam was doing some weird stuff during the day and we sit across from each other at work and be like, oh, I need to go have lunch with my mom. And he never has lunch with his mom because his mom's like an hour away. And I was like, yeah, cool, what I was like, And I just like didn't catch up on any of these cues. So when it was time for um, the vacation in Kauai, I was like, cool, another vacation. Sam told me we we're gonna go take an Instagram photo. So I got dressed, I put on my new dress for free people and everything, I got ready. And then instead of taking out the camera, he took out a ring and that was the ring that Jacqueline and Sam designed together. Mm -hmm. And fun fact, Sam and I had scouted this location literally three hours before we took the picture. But you also found the location like some in some like small part of the internet, right? Yeah, yeah, some very like, I went down a deep dark hole. But speaking of deep dark holes, I feel like there were a lot of deep dark holes that we had to go through in planning the wedding, right? Yes. So, so. <laughs> after Cassie got engaged, we celebrated in Kauai and then we went home and I sent Cassie over five bridal boutiques in Los Angeles that we needed to visit ASAP. Like this was literally the day after I get home from vacation. Exactly. She I was, was so excited. intense. So intense. Excited. Yeah. Okay. And I loved it because I did not know how much I would love weddings and wedding planning and everything bridal related until the moment I tried on that first dress and I could not stop. I was addicted. I am still addicted. You guys, I have a problem. <laughs> I am so addicted to weddings right now. We went to La Bella Bridal in Glendale. Go in and there's dresses on dresses oh, on dresses. Everywhere, oh my God, mm -hmm. I, I can't even. I really wanted to try on some Berta dresses and yeah. Inez de Santo, uh -huh. all of these like couture bridal dresses and we tried on so many. So many. So so many. So obviously we took pictures of everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then we actually went back to Lovella to try them on again because like I wasn't sure if I had truly fallen in love with something and something really, really weird happened. So I came in for my second appointment with the same person and it was super weird because the person acted like she didn't know that she had already dealt with me. Cause she first said hello to me and she's like, oh, so glad you're back. Hi, me, congratulations, <laughs> welcome back. And I was like, no, I'm not Heidi, and also this is the bride. Anyway, so uh, the first time I tried on, she did this whole thing, it was beautiful. She had this spiel about like, now close your eyes, imagine your fiance in front of you, and she puts on the veil, you open your eyes, and you have like a moment, like cry. Mm -hmm. It was super weird, because I told her, hey, I'd like to try on these two dresses specifically again, and then she was like, okay, close your eyes, imagine your fiance. I was like, wait. I was just like really turned off. The first time it was magical, the yeah. second time was like, oh, you do this oh, every time. I know, to everyone. I mean, like obviously, but you don't want to like, feel like a, a factory line item. Yeah. And I felt like a factory line item, so we ended up not getting the dresses there. But, but. we got dresses from Gali Lahav. Oh, and I think that was like, that was supposed to happen. It was supposed to happen. Gali Lahav's showroom on La Brea in Los Angeles. Oh. Legit! 
so good. When you walk in, it is like, ugh, I can't even describe it. It's like a museum of bridal beauteousness. Oh, so, ugh, so I good. I can't even. And so like, we're just looking through the racks and it just, everything, everything is so gorgeous. And I tried on so many dresses. So many dresses. <sighs> but we ended up um, really falling in love with two of them. The two that I ended up choosing for my wedding but we added customizations to them, which made them really, really special. I always knew I wanted two dresses because they wanted one to be like grand, like magnifique and like royal and princess and that, you know, it's really just for pictures and you can't really walk in it, but who really cares? Yeah. And the second one I wanted to be a little bit more mobile, um, but I wanted them both to be sexy. So in the ceremony dress, originally the dress was in white, but I knew that I wanted my dress in blush. I mean, look, my ring is rose gold and it has pink stones on it. Then I was like, let's get a little edge. Mm -hmm. and I was like well this isn't gonna work we're gonna cut it down right here let's cut that out too lots of skin for a wedding dress but also the train was so big and so long I was like yes it is so extra amazing thing though I met the actual designer Galia herself she was the one who measured me and so it was a really really special experience so I'm really really just so happy with the whole Galia mm -hmm. Lahab experience we have to talk about Jacqueline's maid of honor dress and how that came to be because Whoa, it was like full circle. A couple months prior, Cass and I went to Dancing with the Stars uh -huh. to watch Lindsay Sterling. Woo! Woo! Julianne Huff was one of our favorite, and still is one of our favorite professional dancers, uh -huh. was wearing this amazing red gown. It was so beautiful. It was like old classic Hollywood. And I turned over to Cassie and I was like, Cassie, that dress is amazing. Can we use that as inspo? And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah totally. We go home and Cassie's like, wait, Galia Lahab IG just posted that dress. And we're like, Wait, that's amazing. Wait, amazing. So then um, at our next fitting, I asked them, hey, do you have that dress? And is there any way we could borrow it for the wedding for Jacqueline? And they're like, yeah, have her try it on. I was like, what? So Jacqueline actually tried on the very dress that Julianne Huff wore to Dancing with the Stars the night that you went to Dancing with the Stars, which by the way, we have only gone twice. So this yeah. is like super serendipity. Yeah. Um, and it fit perfectly. Yeah, it was really amazing. Perfectly. The only thing they had to change was uh, bringing out the hem a little longer because Jacqueline's a little bit taller. But otherwise, it was body glove fit. <laughs> so that is the dress experience. Yeah. Um, all from Gali Lahav. Amazing. Which amazingly, Gali Lahav dresses are made in Israel. Yeah, in Tel Aviv. And that Sam's family is also from the same area. So it's like very full circle. Yeah, that is super, super crazy. The dress making process took about what, like seven months to finish my dresses. So crazy. And they were like hand sewn and crafted. And I actually got videos from the seamstresses because um, I really wanted you guys to be able to appreciate how long it takes to make these masterpieces mm -hmm. and I just feel like uh, everything with the wedding was so detailed and I just like savored every moment of mm -hmm. it and I don't know if you guys can tell but like clearly I love wedding planning I never really felt stressed I always just felt like so excited ah! all the time I just couldn't stop talking about colors and napkins and utensils like oh I love it but before we get uh, there let's okay. talk venue venue ooh venue Okay, now the very first thing we were thinking was that it would be a wedding festival weekend. So yes, that yeah. everyone would stay on property, you'd have the wedding, like it'd just be this big party that mm -hmm. lasted three days. Yeah. So we were like, let's go down the state route. We found some pretty interesting things. We were, we, we were let down some sketchy roads. Yeah. Let's just say the internet can be a dangerous place. So you know catfish? that exists in wedding venue world. Uh, we didn't know that. So there is this one place that we looked up and I was like, Cassie, look, this place looks very French Royale, like beautiful. And they called it like, Le Chateau d'Italia. Yeah, it's exactly. Like crazy. I was like, I want to get married at Le Chateau d'Italia. And they'd only have like five pictures. And so I was like, oh, I want to know a little bit more about this place. So I reversed Google image, searched all of these. Turns out they stole those pictures from like an actual chateau in France. Yeah, like and a then famous mixed, museum. And then mixed it with a museum from Italy and called it like Le Chateau d'Italia. So it wasn't really a real place. Except when you emailed them, they acted like, hey, we'll meet you here at this time. This is how much it costs. Like it was super sketch. A couple of them did like exist. And I was able to find the wedding planner for that. And the crazy part was, I kept reaching out to them. It was really hard to get in touch with them. Then finally we set up a date. They gave me the wrong address three times. 
Once when I was driving out, second when we were waiting in a Safeway parking lot, and third when we were waiting on the street, waiting to get into the wrong gate going to the house. Like, it was insane. And then when we got there, they were like, okay, well, this is how much it is. And I was like, cool. Like, so I, I'm thinking we're gonna have like the reception over here. They're like, oh, no, no, no. You can only use the left side of the house. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> then after that, we were like, maybe we'll just do like, yeah. like just, you know, like a generic venue. Yeah. And I just, my heart just could not embrace that. I know. Well, we tried to do Maui at one point. We did. We, we even tried to go full Maui. Yeah, we tried to go Maui. And then we were like, it's just, it's not the vibe that I want. The destination was really hard. Hard. I knew that a lot of our friends and family wouldn't be able to make it out. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be able to get to the level of detail that I wanted to get to. Mm -hmm. So after like looking at several venues, we like went weekends and weekends like traveling everywhere looking at venues. Like I like gave up. Yeah, I'd say we gave up for a month. Yeah, and then one day Cassie went back on the search. Ooh, without and, then, me. and then one day I just was like, you know, okay, I, I, I think I got it. I think I can do it. So I don't know. I'm on the internet searching wedding venues again, and all the same ones are showing up again. But somehow I end up on this random article, and I see like a a piece of something, I'm like, what's that? And I clicked on something, which led to another website, which led to another website, which eventually led me to the Solomon Estate. And I was like, wait, how have I not seen this? And then so I set up a meeting to go see the Solomon Estate in Rancho Mirage with the events department and the wedding planner there. Um, her name is Lori Lund, and she gave us this grand tour of the place. And as soon as I stepped on the property, I was like, this is it. Like mm -hmm. this is it. Yeah. And um, we were like, let's book it October 6th. Let's hire Lori to be our wedding planner because she seemed like she knew her stuff. And let me tell you, she is like the reason why a lot of my crazy ideas like actually like happened. Yeah. Like, without her, I don't know if anyone else would have taken my 32 page document seriously. And at this point it's like beginning of February. We have eight months until the actual wedding and then Planning goes crazy hard. Oh, we go into mode. We go, you know what? Let me just take out my document because when I say I have a 32 page document, I'm not kidding you, I had a 32 page it document. It was intense. Okay. Talked about everything from the way the napkins had to be folded mm -hmm. to different activations that we wanted our guests to enjoy. And also, it was how we came up with the wedding theme, which was Enchanted, Enchanted Oasis. Oh my goodness. I oh remember gosh. getting this document and I was like, this is intense. Okay, so it starts out with pictures from the venue, mm -hmm. obviously, and then um, there's pictures of like bouquet inspiration and centerpiece inspiration. Nothing was really supposed to look exactly like the inspo, but it's, again, just inspiration because our theme was supposed to be somewhere between like tropical because of the oasis part mm -hmm. and enchanted forest mm -hmm. um and so it was something that hadn't been done before this is my favorite this is the hoopa inspiration mm -hmm. and lots of organic florals we wanted a white carpet going down the aisle so that's what i would walk on so it'd feel like very like clean and majestic mm -hmm. this was really important to me i really wanted to have flowers along the entire aisle so it would feel like you're walking through a garden and I wanted the flowers to go up really high. I knew I wanted an open air tent and this doesn't show it right now but I knew I wanted orbs. Lots of glass orbs and we're gonna have so much fun stuff to talk about about the glass orbs in the next video but I wanted glass orbs and lots of greenery. I wanted it to feel very very lush. This hard napkin. Do you want to talk about the hard napkin? Cassie really wanted a hard napkin. I really wanted a hard napkin. And for them to create this napkin actually at the wedding, they had to do an assembly line and iron every piece out. So you can see, first they had to iron it in half and then iron this and then iron this and then iron this and then iron this. So it's like a 10 step process. It was a whole situation. I just needed it. I just needed the hard napkin. Yeah. It yeah. happened. It happened. And it made me so happy. Okay, so food clearly was gonna be a big thing at our wedding. Mm -hmm. Sam and I love eating. I mean, who doesn't? We all Everyone love eating. loves Everyone so And I love matcha. So we wanted to have a matcha bar activation during cocktail hour, because I feel mm -hmm. like cocktail hour is such a weird time. Like, a lot of people don't know each other. You're standing there, like, you're drinking, but, like, you're still trying to loosen up. And there's, like, nothing to do because you're just waiting for the bride and groom to take their sunset photos. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, 
why don't we have a matcha bar experience and have like matcha soft serve and matcha boba and matcha lattes so people like people who don't drink alcohol can drink that so mm -hmm. that would have been like my savior yeah. so we were so fortunate to have the amazing people at midori matcha take care of the matcha activation booth so um good. it was so good and actually the funnest part was all the matcha tastings we got to do leading up oh, to that oh that was the best we were matcha out yeah i feel like we had so much matcha that after we left the tasting we we're like yeah, like literally so much caffeine. It was so, so good. good. Because Sam and I are from two different cultures, I'm Chinese Vietnamese and he is Jewish, we wanted to really represent our cultures through the food. Mm -hmm. And so we had things like mini Vietnamese spring rolls and rocket shrimp and dim sum for the food experience mm -hmm. on my side. Tofu skin rolls, Tofu honey, skin honey rolls, walnut prawns. Honey walnut prawns, hello! Oh. Who doesn't like honey walnut prawns? And then for Sam's side, we had like pita bread and falafel to represent like the Mediterranean Israeli side. And we made that happen with the people at Fusion Flare. And that tasting was so fun. That was so good. Oh, but it kind yeah. of feels like chop because you get the food and then yeah. they're like, what do you think? And then you kind of have to be honest because it's your wedding food. So you have to be like, oh, this is a little too salty or this texture isn't quite right and you have to tell the chef while he's standing there after he slaved away in the kitchen for five hours. I know and it, I felt really bad. Yeah, but I mean overall the tasting was amazing. But before we ended at Fusion Flare, we had another caterer that we went to and we gave him the same menu that we wanted mm -hmm. and I was so sad because everything came out just looking like Kind of like conference room. Oh, I know. It was just, it was just like one of those things where it's like you're asking someone to make like an authentic Vietnamese dish who clearly doesn't make Vietnamese dishes, and like it's like hard to tell them that that's just it's just not gonna work. So we had the tasting, but we ended up not going with them, and I felt really bad. But besides that, uh, we ended up with the right people to make our food, and they were fantastic. Okay, so good. Hanging cake. Found this on Pinterest because I was like, oh my gosh, like so many, so many cake options, but like how do I make our cake like stand out? Yeah. Well, the cake didn't even need to stand because it could hang. <laughs> and so this was something we really wanted to happen, which ended up happening. Um, it hung from the top of the tent. Mm -hmm. It was so funny because the day of it was so windy. So windy. And we'll get to that in the recap video. But the cake was like swinging. <laughs> it was really scary so actually scary. like like scary. you can see the cake and then you're thinking I came in like a wrecking ball and our florals were made by Jeannie from Love Some Blossoms, Blossoms who also did the flowers at uh, my bridal boot camp mm -hmm. so she's we'll later oh she's also a blood lattice fan so that was cool popster okay okay can we talk about blue cake so inside that hanging cake was a blue cake so yes there's, blue cake, there's red velvet cake then there's blue velvet cake Blue velvet cake is something that Sam and I fell in love with when we first moved to LA together. And we went to this place called Milk. You have to go when you're in LA, but it is my favorite thing in the world. Oh my God, matcha and blue cake. So good, let me go get some. This blue cake tastes like dense butter cake and it has layers of cream cheese frosting inside. Mm. And the moment Sam and I tried this, and this was probably like, I don't know, five years ago, we knew that this had to be our wedding cake. So when it was time to think of wedding cake, um, we went to Milk and asked them, please, could you please cater and create our wedding cake? And they're like, oh, but we don't do wedding cakes. So I was like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? By the way, here it is. Jack and I'm gonna eat some. So this is leftover. <laughs> ah, it's okay. Um, and so what happened was we asked Lori, our wedding planner, to please find us somebody out there in the Palm Desert area to recreate our wedding cake in blue velvet cake form. Mm. Want some? Yeah. Mmm. Mm. Yes. So this tastes like heaven in a blue cake. She found the amazing people at Exquisite Desserts to recreate the blue cake. And do you remember the tasting for that? So it was so fun. fun. They brought out all these types of cakes, all these types of frostings, and they were like, would you like more of this or this? And you just eat everything and it's just like, oh. And then you mix and match. It's like, yeah. it's like six frostings and like four mm -hmm. cakes, like chocolate, vanilla, lemon, and blue. Right. And then you just mix and match what combos you want and then you just go on forever. So. Right. And then they were like, are you sure you just want blue velvet cake? Cause that could be a little bit risky for people. And we were like, if we're gonna for a wedding cake, we're gonna do the whole thing blue velvet. And people are gonna have to try blue velvet because 
that is the only thing we want to serve. Yeah. That's what we did. It's the so entire three-tiered cake was all blue velvet, plus we ordered extra cake in the back, and that's why we have that's why we have so much cake left over. It's all in the freezer right now, except for this one. Um, this, oh. I know. So this is a dream that died, but for good reason. No, the pony didn't die. No, sorry, the pony didn't die. <laughs> the idea of the pony died, but more like I killed it. <laughs> Cassie really wanted a mini horse. It was just too much. It was switch logistics. But but Lori did find a mini horse out of Rancho Cucamonga, and we we're gonna like set up a meeting to meet the horse. And her name was Rosie. Um, but around the same time, Sam and I had gone to New York on a business trip, and somehow ended up taking Sir George the Magnificent home. Mm -hmm. And so when we ended up discussing the wedding again, we were like, okay, if there's gonna be a puppy walking down the aisle and a horse, it's kind of like a zoo situation. Mm -hmm. And I'm going for Enchanted Oasis, so we're gonna have to nix the pony. And so that's what happened. Yeah. Sir George ended up making a grand entrance, and that is a whole nother conversation. It is. Should we talk about we it? We should talk about it. So, Cassie originally wanted Sir George to float down the aisle in a mini hot air balloon. Yes. And upon yes. discussing it amongst <laughs> ourselves, um, my mechanical engineer boyfriend said that if Sir George flew away in a drone hot air balloon, we would probably be get called in by PETA, and then Sir George would no longer be with us. <laughs> so we had to nix that idea, so that didn't happen. Then I thought, okay, well how about Sir George comes out with like four shirtless men like on like a Cleopatra bed? <laughs> And then my friends are like, I don't think that's gonna work. I was like, yeah, that's not classy. Okay. okay. Then I was like, how about Sir George like comes down in like a mini rose parade float? And then we're like, okay, but we might be getting somewhere because at least he's not suspended in the air. Mm -hmm. And then we were thinking we had to get like a little person to be inside and like drive down the, the float down the aisle. And okay. then uh -huh. one day, she's a genius here. One day I was at home. I remember this moment so clearly because I was just like sitting, walking around the house and I suddenly thought of George and I was like, wait, Cassie growing up has always wanted one of those little kitty cars, Barbie which is car. like Barbie cars, which just yeah. turns on. And I was like, I think this could work. And then I Googled it and they had like mini Ferraris, mini Lamborghinis, and it's like super cute. I called Cassie and I was like, we have a way for Sir George to get down the aisle. So we decided that Sir George was going to drive a white Porsche down the aisle. It was crazy! It was crazy! <laughs> and we'll show you everything in the wedding video. In the Magic Oasis, how do we get everyone to ride a horse or be in this different land, be transported into this world of like just magnificence and romanticism? And I was like, mm. wait. This is perfect because now everyone gets to ride a pony and just imagine men in black ties, tuxedos, women in their evening gowns riding sideways, you know, both legs on one side, on a horse and it's just laughing with the lights in the back and I was like, that's what we need to do. Yep. We need a carousel. We ended up actually bringing in a carousel onto the Solomon Estate, which by the way, was not an easy feat. No. Because when I first told Lori I definitely needed a carousel, she was like, okay, um, well, she measured the side of the house and was like, there's no way a big semi truck can fit through the side of the house. And I was like, well, we gotta think harder because I need a carousel. And then she was like, wait, what if we got like 20 guys and all the guys help each other to piece by piece walk in every single panel, every single horse, every single piece of the carousel. She called up the uh, the carousel people, and they were on board. They are like, yeah, we're gonna do that. And that is what they did. So that crazy. was a full day setup um, just for the carousel itself. And then just so you guys know, we had to rent the property for like five or six days to set up everything I need to set up and to tear down too. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. Basically a mini Olympic Village. Yeah, mini Olympic Village, but I needed to make it happen because this was my fairytale wedding and I was just like, you know what? I save my money in many places. I shop at TJ Maxx, Marshalls, I buy things on clearance, but I am willing to spend my money on the wedding because that's what I want. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. Before that even, I had this other idea, which <laughs> Lori almost entertained this idea. Mm -hmm. I wanted there, there to be a tethered hot air balloon on the property and people could take rides up to the sky and then come back down. 
didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently, apparently it, it was. And I called around, it was a thing. The only problem was we didn't have enough like property space to make it happen. Otherwise, it would have happened. You literally need three tennis court size to you be do. able to you do, do this. So. You do, you and, do. And the estate only had one tennis court only. Yeah, I mean, that was the um, inspo document, and I feel like we did like almost all of it. It was crazy, and all this planning was it was a whirlwind. It was so much fun. Oh, it was so crazy. And so I know much fun. a lot of it was like talks between Cassie and I, and then I know she would just stay up doing fine details. Because mm -hmm. I remember showing up to the wedding being like, I didn't know you were going to do that. This is so cool. Wait, so like what? I guess maybe like the Moss table members, like totally small details. Oh, yeah, small details are so important. Yeah, yeah, little stuff like that. Obviously, like looking at it now, only I would know what didn't go right mm -hmm. but like that's such a weird thing to say because like i think as a whole feeling it went so well yeah it went so well so and well. um we'll talk about how the wedding went in our next video for the wedding recap woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! but in the meantime we're gonna just keep eating this cake yes in the meantime we're gonna keep eating this cake um mm -hmm. is there anything that we forgot to talk about hmm sam obviously has lots of input though <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I would be on the phone with Lori, and these would be like two hour phone calls, like weekly, and I loved it. We we're just talking about Pantone colors and stuff, it's amazing. And Sam would just like walk away and be gone for like an hour and a half, and then, and then he'd only come back to say bye to her. But it really was all me. It was funny though, because sometimes I could tell that Lori was a little bit scared that it was just me, because I had all these crazy ideas. <laughs> oh, we didn't talk about the light tent, the light box tent. Oh my gosh, because. First of all, I always knew I wanted an open air tent. I wanted people to eat under the stars and feel like a part of nature at the Enchanted Oasis. Mm -hmm. um, and then we were gonna do the white chiffon drapes, which mm -hmm. looked so pretty. But when I got the quote for that, I almost died. I was like, wait, that's how much it costs to rent them? Like, can I just buy the drapes and make a dress out of it afterwards? Um, and so I was like, there is no way I'm spending that much money on just the drapes. And so I scoured the internet trying to find like another way to like semi enclose the tent. And I found this super blurry picture on Google images. It wasn't even Pinterest, you guys, of like this like box thingy situation with Christmas lights going up the sides. And it was like, I was like, okay, I think I can work off of that. And so I told Lori, Lori, I'd like to have mini string lights going from the bottom of the tent, up the wall, up the roof, down the roof, down the other wall, over and over and over and over again until the entire tent is encapsulated in mini string lights. Mm -hmm. And she was like, okay, I'm on it. Mm -hmm. And it took them like two days, you guys, to erect the tent structure and then hand by hand, put on every single one of those strings. Yeah. It was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. But and that, beautiful. But so beautiful. And that wasn't it. After that, we had hanging florals with dripping orbs coming all the way down. And we'll talk about the orbs, like I said later. Um, but yeah, they made it happen. And then it was another two days to take down the tent. But I'm so sad. Now I'm at like a mini tent in my backyard. <laughs> oh, good memories. Oh, good memories. Anyway, guys, that is our wedding planning video. It was so much fun to plan. So much So fun. much fun. And um, I want to plan another wedding right away. For you. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you watched it all the way. And let me know down in the comments below what your dream wedding would feel like. Yeah? We want all the we details. We want all the details. Even the weird ones. Yeah, the weirder, the better. Anything is possible. Anything. Yay. Okay, guys, we love you so much. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.